what we'd like to talk about today is setting up and using a um, custom calibration in Measurement Automation Explorer. So you can see here, I have an IMAX open, and what I'm going to do is come over to Scales, and I'm going to create a new scale, and I'm going to select a DAC MX scale. And what we're going to use today is a linear scale, although you can use any of these other ones, but we're going to just do a linear one, nice and simple. Okay, and we're going to call this uh, test scale one. And we're going to tell it to finish. And that's going to open my scale package here. Notice that my incoming prescale value is volts, which is appropriate because we're going to be getting data off of uh, a uh, data acquisition board. And my output, we're going to scale a pressure transducer. So I'm going to make this PSI. And I've gone in and done calibration on this, and I have a y equals mx plus b. So my slope for my line is 25. And my y-intercept is minus 0 0.02. OK? So you can see right here that now I have 0 to 10 volts is equal to approximately 0 to 250 PSI. And I'm going to save this. That's all that's required to, to do a simple linear conversion, OK? So now over here, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, read a data acquisition board. So here's my DAC MX. I'm going to create my channel, OK? Oops, got to get the right thing here. And I'm going to tell it, yes, I want to create this, and I'm going to go get my MyDAC AI0, OK? And now here's where it gets, gets tricky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say custom scale name, and I'm going to create a constant. And under my custom scale name, I'm going to go to that scale I just created. And I'm also going to come into here on units, and I'm going to create a constant for the units. Notice it says volts, that's the default. And I'm going to change this to be from custom scale. So now when I read data from this, okay, my data is going to come out as PSI, not volts, okay? We also have to set the mins and the max, create a constant. My maximum is now 250 because it's in PSI, not volts, and my minimum is zero. So what I've done now is I've given it all of the things that are needed in order to convert the AI input voltage directly into um, directly into PSI. Let's say we have a second pressure transducer. We're acquiring two channels. So let's create another scale. And here's another linear scale. And we're going to call this one test scale two. OK. And I test scale two. My y equals mx plus b is almost the same. It's 25. But my y intercept is minus 0.112. And my scale value is, again, PSI, OK? And we are going to save that. So now we're going to go back to our program. Now, how do we get the second one in here? And this is where it gets a little tricky. What we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this, just like that, OK? Except now what we're going to do is we're going to change this one. Helps if I hit the right buttons here. Here we go. We're going to change this one to test scale two. We're going to change what our input signal is, is to AI1. So now I have both channels of data coming in. OK. And now here's where the tricky piece is, where it says task in. I'm going to wire this task in to this task out. So now what it's going to do is it's going to create this one with this custom scale. Then what it's going to do is come over and create this one and add it to it. So now the output task right here, OK, this out, whoops, that was not what I wanted. I wanted an indicator. 
So now the output task here, okay, this output task now contains both of these data acquisitions with their custom scales, okay? We can also do other scale types, okay? So we're gonna create a new custom scale and let's look at a polynomial. Polynomials are kind of tricky, okay? So we're gonna say my poly one, okay? And it's gonna open up. And notice that what I have here is my set of coefficients. So what I have to do is I have to fill in the coefficients for these guys. So I'm going to double click on this guy and I'm going to add it. Oh, couldn't find where it went because it went over onto the other screen. There we go. My coefficient for the first one is minus 0.33. And I'm, yes, just making these up as I go. And I don't know why this is jumping all the way over to there, but there it is. So this is plus 0.25 is our next one. And this one is minus 1.44. And we'll do one more here. And this is plus 2.56. Okay. So there's my polynomial for my fit, okay? And this is, oh, let's call this, um, this is load, so this is gonna be pounds force. Oop, I can't type. L, B, F, there we go, pounds force. Now in order to use this, we need to do one more thing. And I requires that you have both forward and reverse but you don't have to calculate the reverse ones. You can just come down here, tell, click reverse and generate, okay? And it will go from zero to 10 input, okay? And it will generate what those reverse are. Notice it's not too good. I'm not surprised, you know, given the, what I gave it for a, for a formula, that's not a surprise at all. But we're not gonna use it. It just has to be there. For us, all we're worried about are the positive side. And then you would use this just exactly the same as any other one. Notice that our scale is 2.5 thousand here, okay? So I need to change, for instance, this guy here, he is going to be my poly one, and he's gotta to go to 2,500, okay? And then we've changed it, so now we're doing this one with polynomial. And that's all there is to it.